this week and this split in general has been going into the weekend being like, yeah, actually we should win these games. So then you're just nervous about doing your job, like there's all this frenetic anxiety because it's really clear to me that the, the team is skilled enough to pull that off and if we mess it up, it's because we didn't do our jobs well during the week. All right, guys, gather around. So we have three weeks left till playoffs, six games. And then we are already making our postseason plans. So it could be that like this is the end of what we're doing. If we go 06 in the last four games or last uh, three weeks, and then you have the rest of your year to sit and regret everything that we did and didn't do. So my goal, same as always, is to try to help us to make sure that we don't have any regrets, that we give everything that we can, that we try every single thing that we can to make sure that we have the best opportunity to win the next six games uh, and to position ourselves well for what comes after. So the, the major theme for this week's practice is radical acceptance, uh, which is something that we've, we did in the last season a lot. The two people that I worked on this with the most, right, like Double Lift and Perks, um, they're losing a game and they're like, yeah, but I'm better than this opponent. And radical acceptance is like, sure, you may think that, but objectively or not since you are losing the game. There's a lot of ways that the brain will prevent them from being able to improve. And one of the most important aspects of improvement when you're like up at the top of your game is the ability to be humble. But humble as in like, okay, I know that I'm good at this, but it's being exposed right now and I'm suffering for it. And so I have to perceive ways in which I can improve it. Last week our goals were comeback plays. We did really well in scrimmages. Like everybody try hard it all week, even though we were memeing it, which is good. And we actually got a bunch of comeback plays happening in scrims. Then on Saturday, we did really well after we lost the game at Herald, like making it a 37 minute game against Team Liquid. And I don't know if you noticed, but we had our TP wards out in the side lanes. We had our bushes pinked that we were sitting in and waiting for picks. We kind of did all the stuff that we practiced during the week to make sure that we could get the best fight. Um, and then on Sunday, we really blew it, I think. The TL game was like, we just played poorly for the Team Liquid match, and then the Golden Guardians game, we just trolled. It's really natural for you to be like, oh, well, I can't really play this game because my teammate's inting it, but a better way is to acknowledge that you also, like the situation is as it is, but you also are not good enough to lead your teammate to be better, so therefore they're making those mistakes, and there's something that you could do or take action with in the moment to have made your teammate better before today so that they didn't make those mistakes that they made. Lose a team fight to GGS in a side lane bush, it means that they're better than me. And I don't want to accept that. But if we lose a fight to them, then we have to accept that, right? So we just have to acknowledge it. Like, this is the state of things. Like, right now in that fight, they're better than me and they won that fight. And that means that we're going to lose this game. And Radical Accept means that they're better than us at this time in this game. They're just a better team. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to sit there and take it. And it doesn't mean that you have to accept that as your identity. It just means you have to accept reality, right? And so the faster that we can do radical acceptance in game, the less our emotions will impact our decision making. I think we did take some like important lessons from the games, as you should from every match. For the Team Liquid game, it was more about like testing dragons and how important that they are. For the Golden Guardians game, it was also like talking about win condition and comp, where like what do we excel at? What stage of the game are we good at? And even though like you know this stuff, you have to like constantly remind yourself because the league constantly changes. I feel like everybody's well rested and now after this weekend, everybody's really motivated. And we feel a crunch. So it could be if we start third block soon um, or throw in one this week, we can start to tolerate them because we know that we need to win. In the TL and GGS game, that kind of caught us off guard. It's really important to like keep on top of it and not let yourself slip up, but it's bound to happen. We don't ever want to let a team walk over us by not being aggressive. And at the same time, we don't want to like int the game. So precision is the word that means trying to figure out that line and train it. You have to remember all the fundamentals and all the basic things that kind of got you there in like the first place. Because without the foundation and the fundamentals, it's very hard to 
do anything. We're doing a lot of stuff on the competitive side, both with uh, like infrastructure wise, mm -hmm. what we're trying to do and like elevate. Then obviously bringing in Weldon, who's very aligned with like our process and our system, like how we want to develop talent. Because these are the actual trophies that we won. Hell yeah. yeah so it's kind of nice. That first one was huge. Yeah. yeah. So this is the 26th. my favorite one. interview I ever did. Yeah. Was, with it was CLG's first uh, yeah. championship. It was with George and then and then bringing all of them out on stage. Yep. But the, the win moment with him when he was fighting back tears. Yeah, and he was crying. And then when we got all of them up there in the uh, director's chairs in Madison Square Garden. God, yep. that was just such a such an epic feeling. Yep. We do all of our inside CLG interviews here. Uh, anything else, we do photography in here from time to time as well. But this is sort of like a space for like, obviously players to practice here. So like LCS and Academy use it pretty frequently. Like they'll just come and like hit me up or Michael up and say like, hey, I want three hours in the studio tonight. Oh, we cast all of our Academy games from there. From there yeah. We do Smash tournaments from there. It's this idea of having a dedicated space, right? And I think that's what largely facilities have begun to do for the sport in general. I mean, you know, what was it, three years ago, we were all in gaming houses, and I think there's been a massive shift. What do esports coaches do? That's what I'm here to find out. All of that academy room. What's up, stream? What's up? Just uh, retro jerseys? Yeah. Yeah. Evolution of the jerseys. Ah, of course, MSI, glory days. So we try to let them that we play against it, that if not working, in case we can go first. Did the players go in knowing with this draft, this is what we're focusing on? Or once we started losing, is it up to them to now figure out? Teams when you start losing, you like, either have training goals that you can think of, or you tilt. Just, we have to go on. So we talk a lot about what to do in the losing game. That's our theme this week, actually. Okay. We had a big meeting. When we're losing games, what do we do? I think this weekend will be a testament to how we fixed our mistakes going from last week and also to see where we stand in like the top six because we have a match against C9. C9, we've lost our first game against them, so it'd be nice to win this game around. For, I don't even know who our other match is against, honestly. Oh, against FlyQuest. They actually have been looking better recently. Kind of unfortunate for us that they're on the upswing now, but I think we still have a good chance. So working with Irene for the last seven months has been really awesome. His casual ability to lead is a result of having a lot more life experience. And so that's really relaxing. I've worked with a lot of coaches in eSport who the main thing they're developing is their leadership capability and not just having it innately and then being able to just do their own thing, right? Because he's an ex-pro player, his drafting is very like pro player style instead of analyst style, meaning that he doesn't need to model every single scenario, he just kind of knows them all. I have a lot of experience about draft because since to I become a pro gamer, uh, I already seven years play in this game. So I have uh, many experience about this scenario, this scenario. And also I know uh, since to become a coach, I always uh, ready to understand our players mind because I know about game too but sometimes my players will know about that things too so I always try to understand from their view so okay this scenario we should do this this then I just come home about is it right then they said yes they think so then we just going to draft so always I think reacting is important in draft so I just a lot of experience that is the, my good weapon I think there's so many variables to account for. And being able to navigate through them in a scrim day is like essentially almost a full-time job if you're an analyst style coach. Whereas if you're Irene, he just kind of casually walks into draft, picks a really great training draft almost every time and we go into the weekend and it seems to be basically what we're playing and against what we're playing against. So he's really good at that, just really good.
Should we call it the fog? Oh, look at those sneakers. Red side, red side behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In the river? Yeah, on the Indian way. How are you feeling today? Yeah. It's good. It's good. Like, Same we got on win today. Yeah. Awesome. CLG! Welcome back to the LCS. We're rolling right into our next clash, and it's FlyQuest versus Counter Logic Gaming. So after experiencing an exceptional high two weeks ago, CLG were immediately grounded after their first 0-2 week of the summer split. And as luck would have it, they found seven wins, and suddenly it started to fall apart. CLG fans know about the curse of seven and 11. Three splits in a row. Comes now, forth. there's the smite, there's there the flash is. root, no flash away, this is going to be a lot of damage, and first blood does come through, a nice gank in for Santor, and Viper's flash becomes a kill. There's the ult, they're gonna find the spell shield on the charm, and run away enough, plus the flash should not be knocked up at this turret now, dangerously, dangerously low, they're gonna find a slow towards Wild Turtle, ult into the air, but he's gonna watch out, the flash find and a two, that was beautiful, Biofrost, they get the kill picked up down, but he's gotta be careful, Ruin trying to get in range, flash, gets the root, gets some damage output, but it's oh. face tanking, it's Santorin who blocks the Q. They go back for the shield's not going to be enough. They might trade it back. No, gets back into the tunnel. And <laughs> Santorin makes a huge play. But in the mid side, a tower dive goes through for Wiggly and another kill's answered. CLG overall 2 to 1. Watch that, watch that. Zai, Zai, Zai. Zai, Zai, Zai. Go back, go back, go back. Watch friends, watch friends. Go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. I can go, I can go. We can end here. Look here, look here. I got it, I got it. Right. And I can take it, I can take it. I got it, I got it. We can end, we can end. Yeah, we're caught no flash, by the way. Okay, who's up? Uh, no one, no one, no one. Just Corky, just Corky. We don't have a wave. Yeah, we don't have a wave. I'm pretty sure TT on the Nexus turret. I'm pretty sure TT on the Nexus turret because he will look to wave too, no? I don't have flash, by the way. We need to We need to make sure they don't get this wave, by the way. Can they end? Yes, we can. Go for that. Yo, just look at Corky. Rock got no flash. I need to stop Corky from hitting the wave. Zai is in 10 seconds. Okay. I'm gonna look to zone Corky. Just see try to hit. Hey, focus yeah. hit, focus hit. Luck, focus. luck, luck. Yo, quick, 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 quick. Nice. And then, then, and then, and then, and then. up in three. Zai's up in three. Zai has everything. Focus 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 Chill down. Yo, Zai has everything. Zai has everything. Yeah, okay, we're good. I'm just gonna end, guys. Alright, nice shot, guys. Like it is. Flyquest really showed that our basic macro in the early game on a basic draft is very strong. We didn't make any sort of like drastic mistakes to throw the game like we did versus GGS. Grateful got to sleep in a little bit this morning. Grateful for the couch in our room. Listen to Vincent's piano. Yeah. The last time they played earlier this split, it was a Cloud9 win, and you know Absolutely. CLG are looking for some revenge. Yeah, that was the final game of the first round robin, so not that long ago. Watching what I hope is an absolutely fantastic match between CLG and Cloud9. We are on the rip. Let's see what they do. Do Qmax, but Emax is like a 4% higher win rate. That's what Wiggly is doing here with the hard farm. So I think this version of Skarn is actually underrated in terms of power. Speaking of power, Licorice going in. One more hit could be the solo kill. Got a flash forward into the seismic shard. First blood malfight. Yeah, and that's one of those things that if you practice in solo queue and try and pull it off with zero king, you might mess up the time. Exactly. So exactly. The entire thing is a trick, but there now we we're going to be having a 2v2. Suppression down on Spin Scare, and he's going to be bursted down. Wiggly's also going to bleed out to the Hemo playing, but now Niski's got to get himself away. Biofrost made his way into the mid lane. Here we go. How many licks to the center of a Vladimir? One, two, three. You're out. Oh, back up, back up. Please, 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 him. Oh, at least flash, 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 flash. flash. I have Take, okay, get out, get out, get out. I'll do everything I can. Yo, Yo, lock guys, lock We're good, we're good. Yeah, pop, 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 pop. I can TP, I can TP, I can TP. Yeah, Lee, 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 Lee. Go, Lee. Listen, listen, listen first, listen first. I have to back, I have to back. I'll play it. 
Seriously, 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 did he finish? Uh, yeah. Did he finish? Yeah, Yo, burn. Just burn it. He doesn't can, have spite. He doesn't have spite. Oh. Wait, I finish it. Finish, finish, finish. Yeah, watch, watch, watch. Yes, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Yes, catch, catch, catch. I'll play flash ulti. ulti. Yo, just try to live. Try to live. If we live, it's really good. Everyone, yeah, yeah let's run. 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 Let's we're good, we're good. They're going top now. They're going top. I'm getting, I'm getting bot now. I'm getting bot now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, back up. Bottom. I'm hitting, I'm hitting, I'm hitting. Yeah, back, back top, back top. I keep, hitting, I keep hitting, I keep hitting. Yeah. I got the Nibito now. I got the Nibito. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the base. Okay, oh, yeah. midway, 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 midway. I'm pressuring the end, I'm pressuring the end. Okay, okay, okay. We're we're gonna, we got mid, we got mid. mid, mid, mid. Now fight's gonna ulti, okay? Get back, purple. They're, They're looking mid. Back don't, don't stack mid. They got mid, they got mid, they got mid. Back up mid. I'm okay. No, we're okay, we're okay. They can just ulti Malphite too. Just, just burn the top, the ways. Don't get engaged on mid. Don't engage mid, don't engage mid. I can flash. Can you guys make up? I'm, I'm dead, I'm dead. No, 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 I'm dead. Get the Nib, get the Nib, get the Nib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can end, 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 I think. Okay, end. Actually, they might come to you. End, 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 end. Go for that, go for that, go for that. You can end, you can end. Go, go, go. Yeah, you guys got it. They have nothing, they have nothing. Go, go, go. End, 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 end. You guys. Woo! Let's go. Help this team fight. They do not care about what Cloud9 had to say. They care about taking down that Nexus. Huge win for COG to bring them up to 9-5 and five and tie C9 in the standing. They don't think they fluked their way to the position they're in. They can still challenge for first because they deserve to be where they are. No one should think COG has fluked their way to this point. They have beaten top teams time and time again using different unique strategies at multiple instances at different points in the season. So it's not like a hot streak. It's not like they read the meta well once. Mm -hmm. They are consistently playing well. It's really nice to feel like we've gotten to a spot where Fundamentals, which is a thing that when you clean games, like you saw on stage, that we drill every single week over and over and over again, like those are smooth enough that we can start to talk about extraneous kinds of training goals. Because normally every week we're talking about fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. That's really exciting. I like to be in that zone. By the way, that doesn't mean we're not still practicing the fundamentals all the time. So if they fall off, we're definitely just gonna scrap everything and go back to fundamentals. Don't worry. Ha <laughs> ha.